Good evening, Hebron. Uh, my name is Ollie, and tonight I have been asked to share my testimony on how I came to know Jesus as my uh, Lord and Saviour. It's quite a long tale. Um, there's probably quite a lot to it. I'll try and keep it as short and sweet as possible. I hope at the very least um, it's interesting and you maybe get to know me a bit better. Um, but also I hope that maybe it's fruitful and uh, encouraging and helpful uh, to others. So I'll try and just divide it into two. I will tell you a bit about my background and how I came to church and how I came to faith. Um, and then I'll tell you just briefly a little bit about what God is doing in my life at the moment and what I've learned and how I'm trying to um, mature um, as a Christian um, through through God and through the Holy Spirit. Um, so I start off with, I was born in Paisley, um, which is a town just outside of Glasgow, biggest town in Scotland, I think at the time, don't know if it still is, by population. Um, I went to primary school at uh, Bush's Primary School in Glenburn and there I uh, I think it'd be uh, looking back on it, um, we had kind of quite quite Christian, quite religious um, assemblies, which I don't know if they still do these days or not. But um, for me, that was quite influential. I remember our visiting pastor, Mister Mister Crookshank, um, who told me that I was unclean inside and that that needed something to be done about that. And I think I was probably in primary two at that point, um, and I don't know if it quite stuck or I quite understood it at the time, but it has stuck with me um, that I'm in need as a human um, of of saving from myself. Um, so that, that really struck me. And um, the head teacher who was there for, for such a long time in her career, I think she'll probably retired, you know, maybe four or five years ago, Mrs. Monaghan um, and some other staff, I think in retrospect, they were probably Christians as well. And there was a really great Christian ethos, despite being in quite a, um, deprived, what some people might say is a deprived area of of Paisley and Glenburn. Um, it was it, it was a really a really great school, and it was in primary two when uh, there was an assembly, and the anchor boys came along, which is kind of the junior section of the BB, uh, BB, which kind of like scouts for Church of Scotland, which is probably the, the easiest way of describing that. And they were inviting people uh, to come along, and quite a lot of us signed up actually, and. Um, Mum told me on reflection years later that what one of the things I really liked was the the red jumper uniform, um, so I went along to Anchor Boys and in, in primary two, uh, I went there for a couple of years, and um, the thing that had happened around that time was my parents got divorced. I was probably about um, five or six. And um, we lived in this nice little cul-de-sac at the end of a, uh, next to a, next to a nice little wood and a nice, nice suburban house. And I was only, only child. And the thing that I always remember is that my, my parents lived in, uh, slept in two separate rooms. And the reason for that, and I thought that was normal, um, but the reason for that was because they had decided to split up. Um, but that time in the 90s the property market was really bad so it took them like about two or three years to uh to sell the house so all this time i wasn't i was you know completely uh, oblivious to that but they um eventually moved out and and divorced and um had a bit of an odd custody arrangement where um i went week about so one week i was with mum uh, one week i was with dad so for me that was some people say oh that was really weird that must have been really weird but to me that was just normal that was just um uh, my life really and um, it was kind of during that time that um, at Anchor Boys uh, you got extra points for going to Sunday school so you got like a point system for behaviour and for winning different games and races and things like that and you got e you got a standard extra number of points, I can't remember exactly how many, um, for, for attending this Sunday school there at uh, Glenburn uh, Parish Church uh, which was Church of Scotland Church. Um, so I said to mum, I said to mum Mum, I really need to get these extra points here. Um, can we go along? And I think Mum had been raised in the church a little bit when she was younger in the in the fifties and sixties. But um, because my grandpa left my gran, um, they stopped going because there was a, a kind of a real element of, of of shame there. So the whole the whole family stopped stopped going as far as I, I can understand. 
and um, so mum I think was quite especially after being uh, you know recently break up of the of of the family that um, she wanted some sort of more more uh, moral backbone on some sort of spiritual education for myself and um, so I started going to um, to the Sunday school um, and that was that was okay and mum started attending church and, and gran, my gran came as well um, and that was really nice that was a really nice thing mum was part of the welcome team part of the women's guild helped count the money and was in, really active in in church and you know it's really easy probably for evangelicals to kind of get a bit snooty about well oh, well you know there's a lot of kind of cultural Church of Scotland or other denomination kind of churches that kind of are, are sometimes maybe Christian in name only without actually having any kind of you know real content which which may have been true but it, it was a real um, refuge for us I think and um, it was really good and even you know dad being um, of his of his generation being you know agnostic not atheist but agnostic he still when it was his when I was with him he'd still drive me and go for a coffee or something like that while I was at while I was at church and I was at Sunday school so that was you know fantastic for him to kind of contribute to that as well because he saw um the importance of that um so that was good and you know to be honest I didn't love it to be honest because the Sunday school was full of girls from my school that weren't very nice to me in my class anyway and like the only like boys there were like him um, one of them was like oh, he, was, he was a bit of a mummy's boy and he was his his his, his um, mum took the kind of the youth stuff and so you know it wasn't great for me but you know kept kept going I guess and um um for whatever reason maybe in p6 p7 mum decided to stop going to that church and of course if if the parent decides to stop going to the church, the, that uh, the child inevitably doesn't go to the church um, either, um, and 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 as well, Grand stopped, you know, was was not going either, and uh, Mum was pretty um, pretty convicted that that was that was the right um, thing to do, um, so I stopped going to church, and I guess I didn't really, I guess from my experience, I thought, well, it's okay. I remember once asking one of the youth. Sunday school teachers like oh where did God come from as you know inevitably kids ask the most interesting and existential questions and as and they said oh he was just always there he was just always there and I just you know kept asking kept asking and eventually they just said oh he just came up in a big puff of smoke and then I was like oh right and of course my child my you know child memory was like well where did the smoke come from then and um, it was quite unsatisfactory for me and I felt like well these people don't really believe this themselves They're, they don't really have a good answer and I so I wasn't um, particularly convinced of other people's convictions, so that made me uh, doubt quite a bit, I guess, um, to the th authenticity of of Christianity and and God. Um, but from primary school to secondary school, um, Dad lived in a place called Annie's Land in the, near the west end of Glasgow, and he was in the catchment area for this good, what was regarded as a good state school um, called Jordan Hill, and I got in. I was like one of the last people to get to get in because they've got very small amount of people that come in from Jordan Hill out there that are, hadn't gone to the primary school and I really didn't want to go because I wanted to go with all my friends to Glenover High the kind of catchment area school for the primary school bushes that I I went to in Glenburn um, and was also it was close to where my my gran was so every day after school I'd be able to go see my gran and stuff like that but dad was really adamant that you know, he wanted me to go to a good school and get the best possible start in life and, and you know, mum was in agreement with that and, you know, despite my objections, I went and it was really difficult because although there was other people coming in, they were all from the local area and so when I was with mum, I was always taking the train um, into school, you know, every second week and um, I, they have these like brown blazers and, and some people uh, hope this isn't too uh, too PG-13 but um, just call us Jobby Hill and um, all the other people who were on the train that were kids going to school coming from like Largs or Ayr because my mum was um, based in um, a, a little village birthplace of William Wallace allegedly Eldersley so I was on the train um, from you know people that were coming in from St Aloysius, Hutchison Grammar, um, Glasgow Academy, um, Craig Home, all these kind of posh prestigious private schools that I was always kind of on my own in this in this awful uh, brown blazer but I did get settled in eventually and the person who sat next to me who's one of my old 
uh, friends at, um, uh, at Reggie, who sat next to me at Reggie class um, went to a church in the West End of Glasgow called St Silas, which is an Episcopalian evangelical church uh, just right next to uh, Glasgow University and it's right across from allegedly the Indian restaurant that invented chicken tikka masala with the famous story of um, uh, the person ordering something and uh, it being too dry and sending it back so the chef just put a can of cream of tomato soup in uh, to make it less dry for them. Anyway, I don't know if that's true or not. Um, but at that time, I don't know if I would have considered myself a Christian or not. Probably not. I think what I considered was that church didn't really work for me. It didn't really work for my family. Um, you know, what had happened the generation before on my mum's side, you know, with Gran and also on my dad's side. My dad's side is a, a what would traditionally be called a kind of Catholic side of the family where um, my grandpa, who's, who was very intelligent, um, he helped teach um, teach priests Latin to, for their Latin exams because he was so good at Latin that he actually trained them and tutored them um, to get them through their Latin exams to become, become an ordained uh, priest in the Catholic Church. Um, but the story that I got told, and I don't know if it's true or not, but dad was at a Catholic primary school uh, in the 50s and 60s and he was getting severely bullied and my grandma took the decision to take him to a non-denominational school and the whole side of the family thought that that was just uh, just the most the worst thing you could do and so uh, I never really saw any extended relatives outside of my grandma and grandpa on my dad's side ever um, and I think um, I remember my grandma saying that he w she went to a funeral of, 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 of someone called Father McCabe who was related to the family and someone, you know, this is 50, 60 years later, said, oh, what are you doing here? So for whatever reason, um, they were outside of the acceptable bubble and so religion on both sides of the family was deemed a, a, a problem. It was, it was deemed something that was used to hurt people. It was deemed as something that... Um, caused people to kind of finger wag and saying you're not doing this you're not doing that you should be ashamed of yourself um which is which is you know absolutely horrible to be honest and um you know just thinking back on that and, and what they must have gone through because of that um you know i just count myself very lucky uh and fortunate um but back to the story and um, so i went along mark uh, my friend um invited me to the, his YF at St Silas, the Evangelical Church um, in Glasgow and I went along to this YF and everyone seemed really nice. Uh, they had a youth worker, he, he, was all about the, he was all about the banter. I remember we had a bi literal Bible fight where we threw Bibles at each other which I think is probably not permitted now because of health and safety. Probably not then either um, and probably, uh, um, probably not recommended to throw uh, Bibles about. But that was the thing that attracted me to that YF. The thing that attracted me to the YF is they asked really good questions and they had things such as like modern Christian music rather than just old hymns. You know, I say there's anything wrong with hymns, but the fact that people were actually creatively producing something in the modern era that was inspired by gods, I thought that was really interesting. And the second thing was they wanted to ask and deal with difficult questions like, you know, why does God allow suffering and finally I felt like I was in a place where I didn't need to leave my brain at the door I could intellectually ask questions read the bible and learn about it and not be judged and have fun and have fellowship and for me that was such a great moment in my in my life and um, you know moments that I, I think back of fondly still to this day and um, so I I am um, went along and eventually I started going to the church myself. I used to, when I was at mum's, I used to get the train in on a Sunday morning um, and walk, walk to, I walked to the train station, um, it took me about 20, 30 minutes and then I'd get a train from Johnston train station to Glasgow Central and then I think I would walk another 20, 30 minutes just to get to church. Now, to be fair to it, I was only doing that every second week because when I was with dad, I'd just grab a bus down Great Western Road. But anyway, I would go by myself and to be honest, everyone was really welcoming. You know, I was, you know, 14, 15, going to church every week myself and learning so much from the preachers there and and 
the community that was St Silas and um, you know I'm really grateful to that time of being in that church and I was taken under my wing by quite a few of the, the church families and um, that was that was really fantastic and um, I guess <laughs> in a way um, Christianity was like my um, my rebellion a little bit uh, which is maybe a good rebellion I guess I uh, it was my way to get away from things and I remember going down to the lower platforms on, in Glasgow Central and uh, walking down the stairs and thinking, right, okay, God, I'll give you a third of um, my life. I'll give a third to school and I'll give a third to just, you know, recreation, social time. And I realised as I was walking down those steps that that wasn't, that wasn't enough, that actually God needed my entire life, my whole life. And um, that's kind of when I realised that, that I needed to give everything to God because that was the right thing to do because this person, Jesus, that was talked about in the Bible um, was real and I was having a real experience of, of faith, whatever that, that might mean. I can't, I can't really comp articulate it or comprehend it into words as such, but, but for me, um, God was alive and he was present in my, in my life and that, that meant so much uh, to me going through those awkward um, teenage years. Um, so I continued going.